Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over some new and exciting news we got for Game Builder Garage that we got thanks to the official Japanese website, and more specifically go over the Nodons list since it's looking rather impressive and comprehensive with the amount of options that has given players to test out as they try to come up with their very own game creations. If for some reason you missed it, Game Builder's Garage is Nintendo's newest take on game creation and something of an extension of what Nintendo Labo used to be giving players the option to basically come up with different ideas as to game elements or new game presentation types. This game specifically is promising the idea of like you can literally create your own game, share a game code to someone, and then if they also have a copy of the game, they can play the game that you decided to create. Now, typically a lot of people would try to compare this to Dreams, it's not necessarily like that at all. Dreams was extremely comprehensive and also very like time consuming since the tutorials weren't very great. This game seems to be a rather simpler version of that with more rudimentary ideas and is full of tutorials and we can actually see that directly through the website. So I went ahead and I captured some of the images that you can actually see directly from the Japanese website which is in the video's description by the way so you can definitely check that out. Also in the video description, huge shout out to Reddit which actually put out a localized names for each one of the nodoms and that I'll be using that as a reference. So basically if you don't necessarily know the nodoms are kind of like the little character uh, customization features that you can use to create actions within the game and set different parameters. And I'm going to definitely try to keep this as basic as possible because comprehensively speaking they're going to have to put out a tutorial video to explain this to people because it's a little confusing even just explaining it, but essentially it's like a movement action is a different nodom than a jumping action. Or an interacting option is a different nodom. Directional movement from to back and up and down are two different nodoms. Like nodoms are essentially like a little caricature and you'll be able to see them through through their website where they're like scattered all over the place. And even the images that I use in the thumbnail. Nodoms are essentially like raw representation of like means that you can move your character up and down, left to right, make a jump, create a wall, do a touch option, do a button press, rotate something, use a joystick, you know, tilt. Every single one of them has like a caricature representation of what they're trying to do. So what Nintendo's trying to present here is that if you want to do something very simple, like you would imagine, like opening a door within the game, which is something that developers have talked about being a little complicated. But in this game, the idea is that there is just a simple door that you can place down and it doesn't do anything by itself. You would attach a node on to it, uh, creating an action and interact with said door. You would open it. It's just a very simple interaction. The second you touch it, it automatically opens. That is one node on being attached directly to that door. However, the idea of the game is that you can attach a bunch of different node arms to any of the interactable objects that you can create because you can actually draw them in as you want. Not, not, not necessarily that I think people are going to be doing that all that often, but the idea is that there's going to be items that are interactable that you can attach things to that are within the game's library but you can also create things or use other people's things into your game the same idea of dreams but a little bit different so you would attach a node on to open the door that's step number one but what if you want another door to lock behind that one the second you open this one so you can create kind of like puzzle room objects so you create a connection node on that will basically just connect that door to another door and then another node on that triggers that when the second one one opens the other one closes and every single thing that you can think of like if you want to attach a sound to every time you open that door there's a node on that is just like a bgm it's just an, a sound file that you can pick out of a library that they're offering and automatically it attaches a sound to that door opening or closing so it's just very rudimentary like game creation but it's adding different layers to it with these ideas of these like little characters and you know they're again they're called nodoms and nintendo is just saying like because they look weird and quirky and interesting you know we can just provide a simple icon that is like recognizable throughout the entire game that becomes something of a narrative a language where people can just like automatically know like hey the red ones are inputs 
you know, essentially like something that you directly do. Uh, the green ones are like in between things, like connecting one and another. A blue nodam is basically an output, so it's a reaction one. And orange nodams are objects, so they're like things that you can interact with. So it's it's an interesting like premise that they are using these little interesting characters to just get the entire game's language and the narrative going as to like how game creation will actually work within it. And like I said, the red ones are very simple, like you're constantly moving. So there's a note on for that. The joystick motion, basically like anytime you move, there's a note on specifically for that. If you want to break an object or trigger an effect, there's a note on specifically for that. A button press, the touch options, the controller directions, even the AIR receiver, which is, I believe that thing that's on the bottom of the right Joy-Con or something like that, or the left one, I forget. That has its very own, like, use. So you can even make that an interactable option as well. Like I said, the green node arms are basically like middle ones. So they are like logic operations. Basically things that you tell the system to do and it automatically knows how to respond to it. So like a timer, a counter, a flag, you know, an absolute value, something that, you know, it's like a numeric input that automatically is supposed to have an automatic response, a random thing. So basically like you want a random box, I will give it a random effect. Like if, if you create a Mario game and you just want to jump into a box and get a random reward, that would be a node I'm you attached to that specific square. Anything that you can calculate has a specific node I'm attached to it. A dropper, basically things that are dropping out of place within, you know, the game world itself. Even comments themselves have a specific note I'm attached, like if you want to leave a note or leave a message for others to be able to read. Blue note arms, like I mentioned before, are outputs. So they basically are like reactionary gameplay, like music, anything that's end game. If you want to restart, if you want to freeze the time, gravity, rumble, simple things like that. Even markers within the game have their own specific note on. And then the last group of them are the orange ones, which are the physical objects that are interactable with. So any sort of object that you interact with has a specific note on. But if you have a person that you want to interact with, that's a different note on altogether, because I would imagine they have different properties and different values to be interactable in a different set of parameters. Even car objects and things like that also, like a camera, depending on whatever setup you want to have for cameras, the camera themselves have different ones, like the direction, the position, the FOV, the textures that you're actually going to be able to put. Nodoms are specifically tied to those. So you can imagine that within a specific game that you're trying to create, you can have one item that's connected to just about every other item together through one specific nodam or one specific action because they're all interchangeable. And you have like a set of different values, a set of different nodams attached to every single one of those items that are connected either standalone or with each other. So the only thing that I don't necessarily understand is like if there's a limit of how many nodams you can attach to a specific item. So let's use the door, for example, once again. Well, at some point, the door tell me you've attached too many nodams to this door. Therefore, you know, if I try to create a puzzle room type element where every single door, let's say I use 10 different doors in this puzzle room and they're all opening and closing the second that you open up another one. Does that mean that at some point the game tells me like, hey, you've attached too many nodams because each one of those doors are interconnected with one nodam on top of each other? Does at some point the game tell me like you've used too many, you can't use any more? Would that be a limiting factor when it comes to this? I'm not necessarily sure. Nintendo hasn't necessarily explained that all that well, but that's kind of like the thing about this game. For it being a creation tool, they're being very quiet about what it actually can do and how much of it can you actually manually create yourself. So we are still pending on the details for this game, but I do find it extremely interesting. And again, all the links that are in the video description, if you want to delve this into a little bit deeper, is fascinating. I came across this information a couple of days ago. I wasn't necessarily sure if I wanted to cover it, but the more that I thought about it, it's like people kind of need to know that there's something really interesting going on with this game that Nintendo's definitely going to put out, I believe, right before E3, June 11th. E3 starts in June 12th. So it's like, oh, I'm not necessarily sure if people are actually going to give this game a fair chance because they're going to be so excited about whatever E3 reveals are due, you know, very much the next day. So hopefully it does get a fair chance. 
kind of like unlike Labo did. Although Labo did fairly well for what it was, but it is what it is. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.